Um, well, first of all, welcome from Rolling Stone magazine, Matt Taibbi. Good morning, Mr. Taibbi. Good morning, I'm article in Rolling Stone is called "Why Isn't Wall Street in Jail?" I was interviewing this guy as a former Senate investigator, and he he had worked on a number of these cases uh, involving Wall Street characters, and he said, "You know what? <laughs> Your whole article, you can just say everything's effed up and nobody goes to jail. That's the whole article. You don't have to do anything besides that." So. That's uh, that's what he said, and that's basically what this whole article is about. Uh, no, you know, the Wall Street this had this massive financial crisis, and apparently it's nobody's fault because the only person who went to jail was Bernie Madoff. Uh, and aside from him, there was only one guy who really suffered serious individual penalties, and that was Angelo Mozillo, the guy who headed Countrywide. And even he got to keep, you know, three or four times more. Uh, money, then he was fined. Uh, so there was there was no individual penalties. In many of these cases, uh, you had fines. Uh, some of the companies that were were fined. Well, for example, Citigroup, you're right, was right. nailed for hiding forty billion, right. for hiding forty billion dollars in liabilities right. from investors, and the SEC fined two city executives. Their combined penalty. It was one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. What the one got one hundred thousand dollars, another one got eighty thousand dollars. It usually ends up being that their companies end up paying the fines. So in some cases, these guys are defrauding their shareholders, and the shareholders have to pay the fine. Stupid Republicans. You know, it's funny. I, I talked to some people from the relevant government agencies, and they were saying, you know, it's uh, in, in Wall Street, it's it's a big deal. It's, it's it's a stigma when these guys even get charged. So it was it was already a big enough penalty that they had to they had to be charged and had to be fined. The fact that you know they didn't go to jail or they didn't pay a real fine, um, you know, was kind of a secondary thing. So the greater picture here is what. The greater picture is that the system doesn't work. Uh, there are a, a lot of reasons why these guys never suffer serious criminal penalties. But the biggest reason is that uh, all the people, it's supposed to be an adversarial system. The investigators and the SEC and the Justice Department are supposed to be reviewing and policing these guys on Wall Street. But the fact of the matter is, they're all the same people. Uh, these guys who work for the, the SEC and the DOJ, um, they inevitably leave government service after a, a period of a few years, and they jump to these partnerships at the defense firms uh, where they make three, four million dollars a year. So it's like, you know, these, these are like you know, college basketball players jumping to the NBA. Uh, they're all waiting for their big shot at the big contract. And so they're not going to mess that up. Uh, they, they, they inevitably have this subconscious pull towards these defendants, and they never press these cases. And we have specific cases where guys were told, investigators were told, hey, you can't move against this guy. You can't interview this guy because he has powerful political c connections. That happened with John Mack, the current chairman of Morgan Stanley. So it's just... It's a problem that's too collegial, this entire situation. It's just not adversarial enough. So what? Who calls them to task? The administration? Congress? Oh. Well, I mean, theoretically, the administration ought to. But one of the things that's so striking about this situation is that it doesn't change from administration to administration. If you go back you know, 10, 15 years, it doesn't matter who's president. This same situation with this revolving door of law enforcement executives who serve in government and then go to these multi-million dollar partnerships for these defense firms, it doesn't matter whether it's Obama or Bush or Clinton who's the president, uh, that situation is unchanged uh, from year to year. And that's the reason why we consistently have this problem where these huge systemic crises that happen on Wall Street go unpoliced, or at least, or they don't move against them until it's way too late, like the Madoff scandal, like Enron, like Rite Aid, uh, and like this mortgage bubble that we just dealt with now, where they, they didn't go after anybody until it was way, way too late. So you're saying we're heading right back where we were? Right, yeah, I think so. There's a, a morally corrupting atmosphere where they know that there's not going to be any consequences for anything that they do wrong, and even if, in, in the extremely rare case that they get caught and get, get and get charged uh, for all this, uh, the worst case scenario usually ends up being that their companies end up paying the fines. So in some cases, these guys are defrauding their shareholders and the shareholders have to pay the fines. Uh, it, it is funny. I mean, it's, it's, it's horrible, but it's funny. I mean, that's, it's a ridiculous thing.